I'm sitting here um, in the neighborhood of Nachlaot in Jerusalem, in a old Jerusalem Beit Midrash, and i um, sitting here with a good friend of mine, Levi Moreau, and we're going to um, start a series of talks um, about Rav Cook and um, you know, his incredible corpus of writings on every single topic. You know, Rav Cook talked about so many things um, about the individual and the search for meaning and about finding a personal connection in Torah, finding Torah that suits your unique personality. We're going to go into that. Um, we'll talk about God's, in, you know, Rav Cook's incredible insight about God and uh, in, in many ways his protest against monotheism. Um, we're going to talk about Rav Cook's relationship, to, obviously, to Zionism, um, uh, to love, um, uh, to redemption, all these amazing topics. But before we start, I want to um, ask you, Levi, wh- why do you think it is that the majority of people, when they hear the name Rav Cook, they automatically think of um, the Zionist rabbi, um, that Rav Cook only seems to have written about Zionism, whereas you and I, obviously, and we're going to talk about it, he just wrote about absolutely everything. Um, and Rav Avinir, um, you know, he even says less than 10% of what Rav Cook wrote is about Zionism. So how do you think that happened? Well, I think that a lot of it has to do with the specific emphasis that was put on the Zionistic aspects of Rav Cook's thought by a lot of the people who consider themselves to be followers of Rav Cook. Um, I think a lot of that also has to do with the perception in uh, people who don't study Rav Cook's works himself, people who study uh, the writings of Rav Cook's students or of interpreters of Rav Cook or translations of Rav Cook, mm. because then you only get access to what those people choose to focus on. So a lot of those people um, very much choose to uh, focus on Zionism. Uh, it's not like a question of right wing or left wing or things because Ravavi is a good example of a right wing figure who's so totally dedicated to Rav Cook that he wants to access every bit of Rav Cook right. throughout his you know corpus and incorporate it into every aspect of his own thinking. And he so, obviously is still a specific interpretation, but he the people who can't access Rav Cook's writings directly and Rav Cook didn't make it easy often get a very narrow selection. Yeah, I think that's a very good point, that it's often um, that the case is people have heard about Rav Cook or seen a picture of Rav Cook, but rarely do you meet people um, who are actually studying the the writings of Rav Cook. And the people who are studying the writings of Rav Cook, it's very clear to them that Rav Cook wrote about just every topic, you know, creativity, um, prophecy he talks about, um, just some, some about prayer, about tefillah, um, the mitzvot. But when you aren't actually reading his writing, like you said, it, it, you only get this watered down version. And um, it's not that it's a bad version, but it's only one face of Rav Cook. And so I think what's exciting, um, and I think more and more books, definitely in the Israeli world, are coming out today and they're showing the more individual. Um, focus of Rav Cook. In other words, Rav Cook talking about how a person on their own level can connect to Hashem, um, Torah, Mitzvot. Um, and this is an amazing thing. There are you know, so many books uh, being compiled today in the Israeli world on the more individual focus on Rav Cook and less on the Zionist. And my book, um, I tried very much to follow this trend and just do it in the English world. How can I create a book um, that really just showcases so many faces of Rav Cook. And obviously I'm going to miss, because there's so many more faces I could, but at least let's start talking about Zionism as one face and not all the faces. Um, well, let me ask you another question. Um, when you first started learning the actual writings of Rav Cook, I mean, I'm guessing it was back with Rav David Aaron in Yeshiva Writer, were you surprised that he spoke about things other than Zionism? Was that also a paradigm shift for you? No, but that's because I hadn't heard of Rav Cook before. <laughs> really, my first introduction to Rav Cook was uh, through Rabbi David Aaron and Israelite and Arayta, where the focus is much more on Rav Cook's understanding of uh, God and Torah and the self. And to the degree that they talk about you know, the land of Israel and throughout the area of Israel in the teachings of Rav Cook, it's much more about 
the way that is an expression of and a way Rav focuses in on the nature of the Torah and the nature of God and things like that. So you're saying it wasn't like, um, oh my gosh, he doesn't just talk about Zionism because you hadn't really even heard of Rav Kook that much. Well, I'll tell you, my own personal journey like was very much like that shock because I went to a religious Zionist school in, I'm from Australia, and um, I'd heard of Rav Kook quite often and we'd seen his picture and, you know, B'nai Kiva. Was um was very present in my school growing up, so I'd seen that face constantly growing up, and I remember hearing things about his love of Israel. So when I was in yeshiva, specifically Haredi yeshiva, um, there was this like negativity I had towards learning of Cook because I'd assumed Zionism is the only thing he's going to talk about, which for me I guess meant politics, um, and I definitely wasn't interested in politics at that time. I was more interested in spiritual growth. So yeah, so Rav David Aaron. It would, he kind of opened my mind the fact that Rav Cook talks about philosophy and mysticism and God um, and that was quite shocking for me and I think any person who takes the time to actually read Rav Cook um, it will be a, a shock to their system Rav Cook is not the Rav Cook that you imagined um, and today more and more I feel like people are excited that there is like this um, discovery of Rav Cook being um, something different to what his image has um, been up until now, and I, I don't want to put down the Zionist side, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go in depth into his Zionist side, but just to realize Zionism and his connection to the land of Israel is one element and not the whole element of Rav Kook.